Tonight on Wide Angle, who is Silvio Berlusconi? He's funny, we should have him analyzed. In other words, I'm crazy. He's rich. He's in every important business. He controls the bank. It's unbelievable. And he's powerful. Berlusconi used to have laws written for him by the Prime Minister. Now he is the Prime Minister, so it's even more effective. But is he good for democracy? We are all equal before the law, but this citizen is perhaps a bit more equal than others. Next, on Wide Angle. Major funding for Wide Angle has been provided by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, and the Jacob Burns Foundation. Additional funding has been provided by Carnegie Corporation of New York and the Miriam and Ira D. Wallach Foundation. Wide Angle has also been made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Wide Angle. I'm Jamie Rubin. Imagine a country where one man combines the political power of President Bush, the media influence of Rupert Murdoch, and the wealth and ambition of Ross Perot and Steve Forbes. That country is Italy, and that man is Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. Tonight we examine the effect of Berlusconi's power and influence on Italian politics and the media. After the film, we'll talk with a leading expert on Italy about the Berlusconi phenomenon. He's understood, maybe more than any politician, um, that if something doesn't appear on television, it doesn't exist. Stay with us. May 2003. Silvio Berlusconi's soccer team, AC Milan, has made it to the European Club Championship in Manchester, England. Back home, Milan fans root for the Prime Minister's team before a giant television screen. In Rome, 350 miles south, journalists are rooting against Berlusconi, the man they say is threatening press freedom in Italy. Soccer is a passionate distraction from the political struggle being waged between media and government in a country where most people follow soccer games more closely than their prime minister's landmark corruption trial. It's a big summer for Berlusconi. His team is winning in Manchester, his media enterprises are booming, and he may become the first Italian prime minister to be convicted while still in office. <laughs> E a me è venuto in mente, beh allora forse mi hanno chiamato come esperto di vittorie, visto che il Milan questa settimana ha vinto due volte. C'è un risvolto psicanalitico nelle parole del Presidente del Consiglio, bisognerebbe farlo analizzare, cioè sommato. Berlusconi is anything but crazy. He's a charming, self-assured politician who turns criticism into comedy for his devoted supporters. Siamo governati da quattro scalzacani. Gli elettori non si sono accorti di votare un signore che aveva le scarpe sporche di fango. Questi sono i toni bassi con cui questa sinistra si rivolge al presidente del Consiglio di tutti gli italiani. Loro sono l'Italia che odia. Noi siamo l'Italia. When Berlusconi entered politics in 1993, he was a self-made media tycoon. Italy was undergoing a revolution led by Milan judges investigating corruption at the highest levels of politics and business. They called their campaign Mani pulite, clean hands. Berlusconi sold himself as a charismatic problem solver. Berlusconi è un grande comunicatore, uh, non solo verbale, ma anche visivo. 
un uomo che ha iniziato la sua carriera come animatore eh, su navi da crociera e che quindi ha una grande capacità di tenere la scena e come vedete ha sviluppato quello che nel linguaggio della comunicazione si chiama un format, cioè una modalità tipica eh, di presentarsi in pubblico con un vestito più o meno simile e poi con questo inconfondibile eh, smagliante sorriso. His charm and business savvy has made him one of the world's richest media barons with a personal fortune estimated at 6 billion dollars. Citizen Kane is a mouse compared to an elephant. I mean, Citizen Kane was a very wealthy man who owned an important uh, newspaper. Uh, Berlusconi uh, owns half of Italian television, owns, controls the other half, public television, controls all the advertisement, which in the business is no small thing, as you may know. Uh, he conditions most of, of, of the press. But Citizen Kane is, as we say in Italian, una pulce. <laughs> Nothing. In just one year, Berlusconi built a political party, Forza Italia, from scratch. Putting his television and advertising machine to work, he became the leader of a new governing coalition in 1994. I consider Berlusconi, un politico, come dire, un po' di accatto, un signore che ha fatto la politica, perché questo gli ha permesso di attraversare un momento di crisi personale, lo dico perché me l'ha detto lui, e mi ha detto che doveva entrare in politica perché lo facevano saltare per aria, e avrebbe avuto anche delle noie di tipo giudiziario. After just nine months in power, Berlusconi's coalition collapsed and his personal business history came under investigation. Seven years and nine indictments later, Berlusconi ran again in 2001. His campaign literature included an illustrated biography called An Italian Story. È un testo, un libro, che è stato tirato in molti milioni di copie ed è stato inviato in tutte le case degli italiani a primavera 2001, cioè subito prima delle elezioni politiche. Questo opuscolo è tutto centrato sulla figura personale di Silvio Berlusconi, è come se il partito fosse un appendice della persona e non viceversa. Per poter costruire così velocemente un nuovo partito, Berlusconi non poteva fare altro che appoggiarsi a strutture che già controllava. E Qui è nata, da questo è nato uh, il concetto nuovo di prendere persone, idee, metodi e anche concetti organizzativi dall'azienda e trasferire tutto questo nella politica. Berlusconi was as original in politics as in business. Until 1985, privately owned TV stations could only operate legally in local markets. Berlusconi challenged the state's monopoly on national broadcasting and its network, known as RAI, by building his own network of local stations. This was the cornerstone of Mediaset, his media empire. Tutta la storia di Berlusconi è segnata dal fatto che all'inizio è veramente un innovatore e uno che cambia radicalmente il paese. E prima di fare la TV aveva, aveva creato questo quartiere residenziale per famiglie borghesi nella periferia di Milano si è chiamato Milano 2 ed era una città ideale quando fa le cose le fa sempre al massimo e naturalmente eh, pensava di fare una tv all'interno di questa città Carlo Frecero worked closely with Berlusconi as he started his makeover of Italian media L'Italia era dominata da un sistema monopolistico della RAI, è una tv che ha due canali, uno democristiano e uno socialista, ma di fatto è grigia, finisce alle, alle 11, è una tv dove le ballerine hanno, sono tutte vestite. Since the 1950s, RAI TV was a state-owned network with its channels divided among the political parties. Berlusconi broke the monopoly and created a whole new advertising market, 
by importing popular American soaps, sitcoms, and drama series, and an endless cabaret of dancing girls. Invece, questa TV comincia invece ad acquisire un altro valore quando appare tutto questo mondo nuovo, nuovissimo. Si cominciano a vedere di notte degli spogliarelli, dei porno, eh, dei giochi strani. È come se si fosse stappato in qualche modo la pancia del paese. L'Italia vuole ubriacarsi, divertire, consumare. Fulfilling these desires made Berlusconi a very rich man. Tutto ciò avviene sita telegiornale, ma solamente creando, formando un pubblico che è più forte, più eh, importante che informarlo. Si crea, cioè la TV deve creare maggioranza, deve creare ascolto e l'ascolto è legato naturalmente poi al fatturato pubblicitario. E in questo piccolo sinogismo si fonda l'impero di Berlusconi. By 2001, that formula had made Berlusconi the richest man in Italy. He owned the country's top publishing and advertising companies, the fabled AC Milan soccer team, a bank, insurance companies, and three of the seven national TV stations. He owns the whole country. He owns the whole television. He owns most of the press. He controls all the media. He's in every important business. He controls the bank. It's unbelievable. Rai TV, the public TV networks, were Berlusconi's only significant competition. If elected prime minister, he would gain political control of Rai and power over 90% of national television, the main source of news for most Italians. In any theory of democracy, one makes the argument that one of the, of the characteristics of dictatorships is the monopoly of information, you know. So, so here we have almost a monopoly of information. That's the reply to your question. What does it do to democracy? It, it destroys it in substance. But Berlusconi's lingering legal problems were troubling, both at home and abroad. In the last election, the Economist ran a cover story before the election with a picture of Berlusconi, and the headline was, Unfit to govern Italy. And uh, that was a very strong message. Berlusconi responded by suing the magazine after denouncing the article as leftist propaganda. He tried to kind of play down the whole thing, make it was political, without actually addressing the questions that were raised by the economists that had nothing to do with his politics and a lot to do with his criminal problems. Marco Travaglio is one of Italy's most respected investigative reporters. The Metropolitan cost 192 million in Milan and 45 at Hamburg. For the last 10 years, he's made Berlusconi's legal problems his specialty. This summer, he is focusing on Berlusconi's one remaining trial, known as SME, in which the Premier stands accused of bribing two judges in the 1980s to smooth a business deal. da Milano dove alle due e mezza è iniziata la requisitoria di Ilda Boccassini nel processo SME. Io non credo affatto che, 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 che la magistratura sia di per sé faziosa. Se ci fosse stato qualche cosa di autenticamente eh, discutibile sarebbe già emerso. È vero che si riesce ugualmente a rendere discutibili anche delle cose totalmente normali e assolutamente lecite, ma questo diciamo, fa parte eh, de, delle aberrazioni del nostro Paese dove un imputato fa il Presidente del Consiglio ed è anche il proprietario di tutta, tutta l'informazione che conta. Just before the national elections in 2001, Rai TV host Daniele Lutazzi invited Travaglio to talk about his new book. Si è parlato di Berlusconi e del fatto che appunto si apprestava a candidarsi alla presidenza del Consiglio a due mesi dalle elezioni eravamo, pur essendo appunto sospettato di cose così gravi ed essendo imputato per corruzione di giudici. Questo fu con, come bestemmiare in chiesa perché eh, 
in Italia non si è mai voluto affrontare questo nodo che è invece è un nodo fondamentale sulla provenienza dei capitali di Berlusconi che è una provenienza molto sospetta. By the next day, Travaglio's public television appearance was headline news. Poi è successo il finimondo, è successo il finimondo perché eh, eh, nessuno in televisione aveva mai detto quelle cose. Berlusconi and his team responded by launching 10 separate lawsuits against Travaglio and sued Lutazzi as well. But questions about his past were now part of the national debate. Un elettore in una democrazia dovrebbe sapere chi è il candidato alla presidenza del Consiglio, dovrebbe sapere tutto ed è funzione proprio dell'informazione fargli sapere tutto in modo che lui possa valutare e votare informato. Two other well-known public TV journalists, Michele Santoro e Enzo Biaggi, then both discussed Travaglio's questions on their popular programs. Two months later, Berlusconi won the election. In 2002, on a state visit to Bulgaria, now Prime Minister Berlusconi took on the Rai TV presenters who dared to criticize him during his campaign. Iaci, come si chiama quell'altro? Santoro, ma l'altro. Luttazzi hanno fatto della televisione pubblica pagata con i soldi di tutti e un uso criminoso. E io credo che sia un preciso dovere da parte della nuova dirigenza di non permettere più che questo avvenga. The new management obeyed. Lutazzi, Santoro e Biaggi were all off the air by the following season. Cioè, ho parlato liberamente di sicuro. Mm, non ricordo di aver detto qualunque qualcosa di criminoso. Criminoso vuol dire che è soggetto alla legge. E quindi se io ho compiuto dei crimini, sono qui pronto per essere giudicato. La, la RAI non è statale, è governativa. E quindi con questo governo evidentemente io non sono consono. Nella campagna elettorale del 2001 nessuno ha osato parlare dei processi di Berlusconi, hanno osato parlarne un comico, Luttazzi, in una puntata dove io ero ospite della sua trasmissione satirico, ne ha parlato Michele Santoro e ne ha parlato Enzo Biaggi. E infatti questi tre soggetti sono stati cancellati dalla televisione perché di questo problema non bisognava parlare. La televisione non era l'unico target. By the summer of 2003, the Corriere della Sera, the nation's largest and most influential daily newspaper, was also in turmoil. Italy's most important newspaper, Corriere della Sera, has just had a change of editor. Um, the previous editor has, has resigned, and he's resigned, although he doesn't say so very loyally, because of great pressure being put um, upon that newspaper to tow a governmental line. The last straw may have been the comments of editor Ferruccio de Bortoli, revealing Berlusconi's efforts to influence the paper. The present editor of the Corriere della Sera is the one that uh, uh, weeks ago had to publish a long letter by one of, the pre of, the, of Mr. Berlusconi associates and, and, and um, co-defenders in Berlusconi trials. Uh, the newspaper published the letter and then the editor added to uh, a little note at the end of the letter and say, uh, I, I want to reassure Mr. Berlusconi that we, as a free newspaper, would have published these letters even without the strong pressures we have received from the Prime Minister. De Bortoli's resignation shocked his journalist colleagues. abbiamo perso il Corriere e la democrazia italiana ha perso il suo più grande giornale perché il giornale è perso io so chi lo dirigerà è una persona onesta e per bene ma non è come, come era il mio amico Ferruccio è uno scandalo che abbiano licenziato il povero Biagi e se il povero scusate ma è che se io sono capace di mangiar via Biagi e Santoro, figuratevi voi che contate molto, molto meno, siete tutti condannati, nessuno può alzare un dito, nessuno può alzare il sopracciglio perché Berlusconi è spietato. 
Giovanni Sartori is one of the Corriere's most senior contributors. I'm very distressed, but um, it was in the cards. That's what I've been saying the whole time. I mean, you know, that uh, Berlusconi wants to silence the last uh, fastidious voice that is around. If the Corriere falls, I think freedom of expression is, is, very, is, is, is in jeopardy, in Italy. Some voices refuse to be silenced. Marco Travaglio's daily column, Bananas, published in L'Unità, a small left-wing newspaper, continues to hammer away at the Prime Minister's legal problems. Bananas, because I am a great sympathizer of Woody Allen, and then because the Italian situation is a situation of the Republic of Bananas, the Republic of South America. His managing editor, Furio Colombo, believes that Travaglio's reporting is essential during what he calls a civil liberties emergency. Marco Travaglio is probably our best investigative journalist. He's the one that knows everything uh, about uh, uh, Berlusconi trials. He's a super specialist that in any given moment can enter into a detail of any given uh, trial relating Berlusconi to his business, Berlusconi to uh, corruption. Uh. Despite numerous lawsuits against Travaglio and Lunita, he refuses to allow his paper or his reporters to be intimidated. Intimidating is not a power, it's an influence that you have. Intimidating means I told you what to do. Why you don't do what I said, knowing that will be inconvenient for you not to follow the line? that I have been uh, suggesting. The power of intimidation is, 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 is very important in creating a quasi-regime. Berlusconi's power over television and his own image is stronger still. In 1985, his TV stations were legalized by a special act of parliament. Today, Rai and Berlusconi's media set, with three channels each, account for 90% of the Italian TV audience and $4 billion in advertising revenues. Twelve years ago, Berlusconi asked Enrico Mentana to create a news division to compete with Rai. I had the incarico to make a television completely different, very modern, that was trying to collect the favor eh, di tutti i telespettatori, soprattutto quelli che non guardavano più i telegiornali della RAI perché c'era troppa politica, perché erano troppo faziosi. Si comincia a dire bisogna fare la guerra alla RAI, occorre creare una TV contro la RAI, cioè l'altro obiettivo è battere la RAI. Questa cosa oggi sembra normale, ma allora era rivoluzione assurda, come affrontare la RAI. In 2001, when Berlusconi's coalition won power, he also won control over his competition, Rai Public Television. Within a year, the network's board of directors was replaced, and Rai was set on a new course. Roberto Natale heads the union representing some 1,400 Rai journalists, and he believes that Berlusconi is intentionally destroying public television. La Rai, nell'epoca Berlusconi, e nonostante tutti i proclami di centralità fatti dai gruppi dirigenti insediati da Berlusconi al vertice della Rai, la Rai sta perdendo nei confronti di Mediaset. Questo è, è un dato di fatto. Per quanto riguarda specificamente l'informazione, avvertiamo una pressione ancora più forte nei confronti dell'autonomia dell'informazione. E spesso il direttore dice ai giornalisti, guardate che mi è arrivata una telefonata, questa cosa non si deve più vedere. È successo sempre, è questione di dosi, ma con questa gravità, con questa violenza non era successo mai. During the recent war in Iraq, Rai's journalists felt pressure to support Berlusconi's pro-war stance. La bandiera della pace al TG1 ha avuto difficoltà ad essere ripresa e la Rai a proposito della pace non ha dato la diretta della grande manifestazione che ci fu in Italia a metà febbraio. Noi abbiamo avuto problemi a usare la parola pacifisti, non si poteva dire pacifisti, 
Oltre alle bandiere, naturalmente. Cos'è che bisognava dire? Disobbedienti. 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 Bisognava sostituire sì. pacifisti a disobbedienti. Poi oltre a sudore le notizie che non vanno in onda. Cioè, fatto, sì, non non notizie intere che non notizie date. che non vengono, non vengono date. date. No, di Oppure l'immaginazione, no? la priorità delle notizie è scelta con criteri che non sono giornalistici, ma rispondono a logiche diverse, di carattere più politico. At campaign appearances, Berlusconi makes sure every fan goes home with an autograph. <laughs> Carlo Frecero knows Berlusconi better than most. Lui vuole piacere a tutti. Ecco, lui è ossessionato da sedurre chiunque. Lui è, deve essere il più simpatico il più brillante, l'ossessione della seduzione, ha. è il vero veramente eh, rockstar. L'onorevole Chiara Moroni. Liliana, è l'unica con la quale ti potrei tradire. Il pensiero critico per lui è un grande difetto, perché sa che il pensiero di critica è una censura, è una sottrazione. Al, al essere big. Late May 2003. Summer is heating up. Across Italy, local elections are underway. Francesco Vaccaro, Forza Italia's youngest candidate, is running in Rome. He's a typical Berlusconi supporter, firmly believing his hero is being persecuted in the SME corruption trial, that his legal problems are just a political smear. Lei andrà a votare domenica? Certo. Lascio anche al mio. Mi raccomando, è necessario un voto per cambiare. Vediamo. Io ho 23 anni, ho utilizzato come slogan la forza di un giovane e il coraggio del cambiamento. Faccio politica con Forza Italia, con Silvio Berlusconi. Buongiorno signora. Posso lasciarmi un medaglio per il mio vaccaro e il mio professor Vinciano? Silvio Berlusconi è un uomo che ha portato una politica italiana una grande novità e ha ridato all'Italia la speranza ha ridato all'Italia la speranza che si potessero fare le riforme, che si potesse cambiare. Ed è un dato di fatto che lui, per questo suo ruolo che ha avuto, è stata una persona che purtroppo è stata vittima di una grande campagna denigratoria, di una grande campagna diffamatoria anche sui media. Buona giornata. Buona giornata. Berlusconi è vero che ha delle televisioni all'interno delle quali però c'è grande pluralismo, sicuramente lui è una persona che è stata vittima di molti attacchi, ma eh, gli italiani lo hanno, lo hanno scelto. I supporters note that most of the cases against Berlusconi have been dismissed. Certo è che se fossero vere tutte queste vicende lui sarebbe stato condannato. Se fossero vere gli stessi magistrati che con tanta solerzia lo hanno imputato lo avrebbero condannato. Ma in Italia... Il conflitto di interessi è un falso problema. In Italia il conflitto di interessi è più, più che altro un argomento politico, un argomento elettorale. Vaccaro's defense of Berlusconi is very familiar to Giovanni Sartori. His television, of course, says it's all false, that he's being persecuted by, by, by red judges, and that it's all, uh, so he, he's a victim. That's what half of... The Italian television has been telling Italians since 94. I received terrible letters. They're totally uninformed. They say, why are you persecuting this poor man? He's innocent, you know. Not everyone thinks there's no case to answer. A small group of protesters is waiting outside Rai's studio while the Prime Minister is inside. Io sono Francesco, sono della Sinistra Giovanile, che è l'organizzazione giovanile dei democratici di sinistra. Il Presidente del Consiglio oggi ha detto che farà un bilancio dei suoi due anni di governo, quindi noi vogliamo semplicemente riuscire a consegnargli questo. Come vedete sono pagine bianche, così come i fatti che il governo Berlusconi può vantare di aver fatto in questi anni. Il Presidente del Consiglio, o meglio, il giornalista che, pre che presenta questa trasmissione stasera, ha rifiutato ai capi dell'opposizione di fare un confronto, così come viene fatto in America, in tutti i paesi, tra l'opposizione e il governo. Quindi noi vogliamo richiamare anche questa azienda, che è la nostra azienda, l'azienda pubblica, al rispetto di un'informazione democratica. 
prego. Oh. No, Come? Siamo Perché no? Perché no? Perché no? Oh. While recording this very small protest, our camera crew was confronted by plainclothes police, a reminder that any image challenging the premier is unwelcome. If you think that that happened on public grounds, uh, what happened to you, uh, it was certainly in violation of law, the, your civil rights were violated, and the Italian constitution was violated. Berlusconi's government is also working this summer to rewrite the country's media laws. Last year, the Constitutional Court ruled that Berlusconi controlled too much of the television market. The existing laws preclude any individual from controlling more than 20% of national broadcasting. The Constitutional Court has ruled at least 20 times to reach a one simple conclusion that the current situation is in violation of constitutional guarantees of pluralism in this country. They ask the government to take steps. Uh, these steps include putting one of Mr. Berlusconi's channels on satellite, and the government keeps asking for more time. The last constitutional court ruling in November last year was quite clear. He said, you've run out of time. Berlusconi's solution is to have the laws rewritten. Berlusconi used to have laws written to him for him by the Prime Minister. Now he is the Prime Minister, so it's even more effective. Senator Tana Duzulueta believes that censorship is not the only factor in Berlusconi's attack on the Rai. Two years ago, Fiat, Italy's largest automaker, cut five million dollars in advertising from Rai while increasing its advertising on Mediaset by four million. And last year, Rise advertising revenues dropped by 14%, while Mediaset lost less than 1%. Every minute that public television, which he controls, is losing viewers, he's actually getting richer. So he has this wonderful instrument in which he shuts up the opposition, makes public television horribly boring, and uh, so he's had achieved two results. He's got richer because his private television is cashing in on it, and he's silenced the opposition. Sicuramente da quando lui è Presidente del Consiglio, stranamente la RAI ha avuto una grossa flessione negli ascolti e se vogliamo mettere di nuovo tra virgolette un altrettanto stranamente Mediaset ha visto i suoi titoli volare in borsa e non ha mai fatto una raccolta pubblicitaria così grande, così importante, così ricca. La RAI fino a due anni fa era in testa negli ascolti rispetto a Mediaset L'anno scorso per la prima volta ha cominciato a perdere la supremazia nel prime time, quest'anno il divario a favore di Mediaset sta crescendo ogni mese di più. Questo è un fatto, anche coloro che eh, simpatizzano per Berlusconi ne devono prendere atto. Un'emergenza che è relativa a, al pluralismo del paese, al pluralismo della comunicazione del paese e che è relativa anche alla tenuta industriale della RAI. Ma guardate che adesso cominciano a essere in pericolo i posti di lavoro e questo ai colleghi dobbiamo spiegarlo, perché una RAI che abbia perso, come la RAI sta purtroppo perdendo il primato negli ascolti e che abbia per di più questa immagine così sbiadita dal punto di vista dei contenuti editoriali, ma perché dovrebbe continuare ad essere finanziata con tre reti tv e tre reti radio? Berlusconi's reach in the Italian media is so extensive that even his toughest critics find themselves dependent on him. This summer, Professor Paul Ginsburg's latest book, Berlusconi, was published by Einaudi, which is owned by Mondadori, which is controlled by Fininvest, Berlusconi's media holding company. Now we're going to the Mondadori bookshop um, to see uh, how my book's going if it's selling well, if it's not selling at all, if it's um, prominently displayed, if they're hiding it away. It analyzes the way in which he's just one of a number of media barons who are um, using their great financial resources to storm the public democratic sphere. And it's trying to warn people against the dangers of that process and to ask um, what sort of antibodies do our democracies have? My book on Silvio Berlusconi, to call it a book is a bit too much, it's just a little pamphlet. It was a good test case because here we are, was he going to try and censor that or was he going to let me say what I wanted to say? Um, substantially I've said what I wanted to say. Of course this, even if it's printed in 
10, 20, 30,000 copies is going uh, to readers who anyway politically are of a certain type. If we were going to talk about mass television audiences, uh, Mr. Berlusconi might be much less liberal. Marco Travaglio is spending another long day at the SME corruption trial in Milan, which has been dragging on for the last three years. Despite being sued for $50 million, he's writing another book about the premier's corruption trial. The manuscript is due in a month. Sono stremato, non riesco più a vivere, ho troppe cose e veramente non ne posso più. Adesso stiamo imboccando l'autostrada, c'è una, una fila. È una cosa da mettersi a piangere. Grazie a te, ciao. Se dico delle parolacce o delle bestemmie, tagliatele. The whole trial is now in doubt because Parliament is on the brink of passing a special law to grant Berlusconi immunity. This law will effectively suspend the trial until Berlusconi leaves public office, making it likely that no verdict will ever be reached. Berlusconi sapeva benissimo quando si è candidato nel 2001 alla presidenza del Consiglio che durante la sua presidenza del Consiglio, nel caso in cui fosse eletto, sarebbe arrivata una sentenza. E quindi ha deciso di buttare questo suo problema personale sulle spalle dei cittadini. E oggi eh, ha fatto approvare una legge eh, sull'impunità eh, sua personale perché è una legge che riguarda lui e basta, con la scusa che altrimenti eh, una sua eventuale condanna avrebbe danneggiato il paese. In Rome, the Italian Senate is debating the immunity bill. Parliament has been practically hijacked. We're talking about a media law cut to measure for Mr. Berlusconi. Now I'm going into plenary and we're going to have to face up to a request for overall immunity, not just for parliamentarians, but for high, high, high officials, high officers. And after that, we're going to be talking about conflict of interest with another law made to measure for Mr. Berlusconi that would eliminate the concept of conflict and leave his interests untouched. That's what Parliament is about these days, looking after Berlusconi. Up till now, the things that Mr. Berlusconi really cares about have passed, and pretty quick too. Yeah, I think it'll pass. I, I'd like to think that there's a limit and that public opinion will rebel, but he's got numbers on his side and his coalition have been loyal on these votes up till now. The immunity bill passes in the Senate. Now, if the bill passes in Parliament's lower house, it will become law, and Berlusconi's legal problems will be frozen. Today, after three years of hearings, Berlusconi will make his second appearance in court at the SME trial. In Italy, a defendant has the right to make a spontaneous declaration. Defendants are not obliged to answer the prosecution's questions, and the statement is not given under oath, so he is not liable if what he says is not true. Berlusconi's lawyers are members of Parliament. From his party, Niccolò Gadini sits on the Justice Committee, and Gaetano Pecorella is its chairman. Tomorrow, they will be in Rome voting in Parliament on the proposed immunity bill which they hope will halt the trial against their client. Marco Travaglio is in court, where the Prime Minister is making his spontaneous declaration. Anche esponendo chi entra nel procedimento a delle 
immagini negative che diventano eh, quintali, tonnellate di fango che per sette anni gli vengono eh, scaricate addosso dai giornali, dalle televisioni, in Italia, all'estero, quando anche questo qualcuno ha una responsabilità politica molto precisa. He argues the alleged bribes involved sums trivial to a billionaire. Ma io mi domando, se ci fosse stato davvero bisogno di dare qualche centinaio di miliardi a qualcuno, il signor Berlusconi aveva bisogno di falsificare i minacci delle sue società, faceva semplicemente un cenno alla cassa personale dove non ci sono vincoli di contabilità e dove poteva prelevare non centinaia di milioni, ma centinaia e centinaia e centinaia e in qualche occasione anche un migliaio di volte. The Prime Minister concludes by setting a date to return to court. Beh, è una farsa. Il 25 sa che sarà già passato il lodo meccanico e quindi non ci sarà più nessuna udienza. E questa legge che sta approvando lo renderà al di sopra della legge, nel senso che potrà fare quello che vuole e potrà aver fatto quello che vuole e non gli succederà più nulla, non lo potranno più processare. Praticamente questo processo muore oggi, questo è il funerale del processo e credo che sia anche il funerale della giustizia italiana. Marco Travaglio didn't have to wait long to see if his prediction came true. One day after Berlusconi's court appearance, the lower house is voting to pass the immunity bill. Berlusconi's attorneys are present to vote on the bill. The debate has dragged on all day, as more than 70 amendments are considered a stalling tactic of the opposition. Outside, a crowd is gathering to protest the bill's passage. The demonstrators are urging the opposition to protest the immunity bill by walking out, which they later do, because it is clear that Berlusconi's governing coalition has the votes. They are singing an anti-fascist song and holding balloons that represent the constitutional rights they say will float away if the bill is passed. This is the last time in the city, here is the camera, where it's already been approved. In a few years, they will approve the law that has been approved in the Senate. It will have an effect immediately for a few days to block the process in which it is involved in the Premier. After eight hours of debate, the immunity bill comes to a vote. The immunity bill passes. It applies to any crimes committed before or during Berlusconi's public service. The balloons to represent equality before the law are released into the Rome sky. In Florence, thousands more protesters took to the streets. Marco Travaglio spoke to the crowd. Now we don't need to change the Constitution, although all the rules, the appearances, the procedures can be respected. That's unnecessary because the power of, of television 
which did not exist in Hitler's or Mussolini's time, combined to the power of radio and combined to the power of the press, you can have democracy as an empty shell. The substance uh, is gone, always going. On July 1st, just 13 days after the immunity law passed, Prime Minister Berlusconi took over the rotating presidency of the European Union. At first, his charm seemed to be winning over his audience. But just 24 hours into his presidency, a German member of the European Parliament questioned his conflicts of interest and the immunity law, and the honeymoon was over. So che in Italia c'è un c'è un produttore che sta montando un film sui campi di concentramento nazisti. La suggerirò per il ruolo di capo. Lei è perfetto. Se questa è la forma di democrazia che intendete usare per chiudere le parole del Presidente del Consiglio europeo, sembrate turisti della democrazia, dei turisti della democrazia. His remarks in Strasbourg were not heard on Rai's leading news program. It has been a productive summer for Silvio Berlusconi. His trial has been postponed indefinitely. He's immune from further prosecution. His media empire grows unrestricted, and his soccer team are European champions. But the questions won't go away. This month, The Economist magazine challenged Berlusconi again to defend himself against a long list of unanswered questions about his financial and political past. Wide Angle continues with Jamie Rubin. Alexander Stilla, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about Berlusconi's power over the TV. Directly or indirectly, he controls 90% of the TV in Italy. But if you're an Italian sitting uh, in Italy watching television, do you get objective news? Do you learn about the truth about uh, the Italian economy, Italian politics? Well, to give you an idea, I mean, if, if this, uh, this matters during election coverage, and I think we all appreciate how important that is, if you, um, you know, if you watch one of Berlusconi's channels, um, the, the anchor man on one of his channels wept with joy when Berlusconi was elected on air. I've watched programs in which he's just literally insulted the political opposition, called them liars, called them enemies, called them communists, called them all sorts of things. I saw his main political adversary was, uh, was given a little soundbite in which he was portrayed at a fish market talking about how to cook fish instead of talking about the political issues of the day. You know, that may seem laughable to many people, and many Italians will tell you, oh, I actually watched that for amusement. But it's not so funny if you consider that, for example, uh, there are statistics that show that um, the people who watch Berlusconi's channels vote overwhelmingly for his party. You realize that control of television does translate into votes and translates into power in ways that should make, I think, everyone e uneasy. Well, let's talk about the specific charges of corruption and bribery that uh, have been made and against Berlusconi. Do you think the average Italian regards these charges as outrageous, or do they somehow come to expect uh, business leaders to, to bribe the tax man, for example, to avoid paying taxes? Well, I think it's true that one reason why there's been a high level of toleration for um, Berlusconi and his legal problems is that um, many Italians do skirt the law, in many cases feel they're forced to skirt the law by excessive regulation. There are something like 70,000 or 90,000 laws in Italy and only 5,000 in France or Germany. Tax laws. Just laws in general. Their life is very regulated. But I think that what uh, many Italians don't know, because it hasn't been publicized, is that the kind of uh, bribery and the kind of corner cutting that Berlusconi and his company has done is on an entirely different scale. It That's did. not being reported to the Italian people uh, in detail. It, it is reported, but it's, for example, never explained on TV. So that, for example, what you'll get on TV is Berlusconi or one of his lawyers saying, this is outrageous. They've invented an entire case and he baits space on no evidence. And then a journalist doesn't intervene and say, actually, the evidence is this. And there are two ways of, of looking at this case. You only get, um, he's been accused of bribing a judge, uh, a contradiction of that uh, charge by saying it's invented, and no independent analysis of what the facts are. Do you regard the newspapers, as opposed to the television, as 
free in Italy, and haven't they been some of the primary <coughs> critics of Berlusconi? Uh, well, they have, but it's interesting. Berlusconi um, doesn't much uh, worry about um, newspapers that are, or magazines that are sort of clearly on the left. He knows that their readers will never vote for him. Where Berlusconi has dedicated his attention are in the print media that, that have uh, a broad mainstream centrist readership. Like we saw in the film. The Corriere, Corriere della Sera is the prime example. La Stampa, the newspaper of Turin, is the other. Um, they are big centrists. It's like the Washington Post and the New York Times here in Italy. And he has been able to exercise a lot of indirect control of those papers. But can't you read in, in Corriere della Sera today, tomorrow, next week, strong criticism of Berlusconi? Uh, you would think that that would happen in any uh, in, in a naturally free press, um, and that has not happened in Italy. So that as a result, the average uh, sort of center voter doesn't quite know what to believe. I think actually, if they examine them closely, they'd be quite shocked. Well, we found that very interesting in the film that you had his lawyers, his very own lawyers in his trial, going back as parliamentarians to change the laws to his advantage. Could that happen in any other country, or is that pretty unique? Um, to maybe somewhere in South America, <laughs> but um, I'm not aware of it uh, happening in any advanced democracy. Uh, it's a very, very anomalous and peculiar situation. They literally would spend two or three days a week in Milan defending Berlusconi in their black lawyerly robes and then fly back to Rome and then rewrite the laws that would then short circuit the very trials in which he was a defendant. And that happens in all sorts of areas, including um, uh, business areas, economic legislation. How much do you think the, the Berlusconi model is playing out in other parts of the world? Well, I think the thing that makes Berlusconi a really interesting, important figure is that he crystallizes um, in a very dramatic way problems and issues that exist in all modern democracies now, in every society, including ours. Uh, money, media, and political power are very closely connected. He's understood, maybe more than any politician, um, that if something doesn't appear on television, it doesn't exist. You look at uh, the recent decision of Arnold Schwarzenegger to enter the race for governorship. The fact that he is a a celebrity, a TV personality, movie personality with an enormous amount of money makes him a player from one day to the next. I don't think people uh, have fully processed how deeply television has changed the political process in our own world. Uh, political parties have become vestiges of what they were and um, uh, individuals and large amounts of money can um, leapfrog over that process. Uh, in Italy, it exists in a much kind of neuter and cruder way, um, but I think people everywhere in this country as well uh, have a very uh, uh, dismaying feeling that politics is going over their heads, is being decided by wealthy interests that don't take them into consideration, and are bending the legislative process on their own behalf. People get used to that and say, well, if they can do that in Italy, then what's the big deal if I do it to a lesser degree here in France or in England or in this country? Um, and so I think it's, it's setting precedents that are unhealthy for democracy. Alexander Stilla, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Next time on Wide Angle, South Africa. Ten years after apartheid, the country has failed to deliver prosperity for the black majority. They do not see that we don't have jobs. Now the government has a new plan to spread the wealth. Will black economic empowerment improve the odds for South Africa's majority? On the next Wide Angle. Stay with Wide Angle at PBS Online. Explore Berlusconi's media empire. Learn about Italy's post-war politics and evaluate Berlusconi's impact on democracy. It's all at pbs.org.
Major funding for Wide Angle has been provided by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, and the Jacob Burns Foundation. Additional funding has been provided by Carnegie Corporation of New York and the Miriam and Ira D. Wallach Foundation. Wide Angle has also been made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.